Well, I'm sure we've all been at those jams before where the banjo player finally kicks off a tune that we actually know, only it's 10 times faster than we normally play it. So when it finally comes around for us to take our solo, we just crash and burn because we can't keep up with those faster tempos. By the way, if you're new here, my name's David, I play mandolin, and I've had a lot of these experiences myself because playing fast is hard, but there are a lot of occasions like this where we're called to play faster as mandolin players. So. Today, I wanna to share with you my top seven tips on getting faster on this instrument that will hopefully help you push through any speed plateaus that you're experiencing and get you feeling more comfortable in these situations. And we're gonna start off with tip number one, which is have a growth mindset. Playing fast is as much of a mental challenge as it is a physical one. And I think the first mental block that you have to get through is accepting the fact that you can get faster. If you think that you'll never play fast or you just identify yourself as a slow player, then that's actually gonna be the one thing that holds you back from trying to play faster, which in turn becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And when I first started out, I definitely had a lot of limiting thoughts like this until I came across the idea of a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. This is actually a concept from psychologist Carol Dweck who suggests that that people usually have one of these two mindsets when it comes to learning. Either the fixed mindset, which is the belief that all of our intelligence and talents are fixed, innate, and can't really be changed, or the growth mindset, which is the idea that everything is a skill that can be learned and developed over time. So obviously, we're not gonna learn to play as fast as Chris Thiele just through positive thinking. There's also a lot of time and effort that goes into the equation. And honestly, we may never ever be able to play as fast as Chris because he practices like 13 hours a day. But the truth of the matter is, I think anyone, barring any real physical handicaps, can get faster if you adopt a growth mindset. It's the first step in this process, and the rest is gonna fall into place maybe even quicker than you think. Which brings us to tip number two, which is actually practice fast and do it regularly. You know, it's really unrealistic to expect ourselves to play faster at a jam or on stage when we're not actually pushing ourselves to play faster on a regular basis in the practice room too, which sounds obvious, but it's actually easy to overlook. I realized this when I first joined the band Mile 12 back in the day, because it was the first time I was really pushed to play faster bluegrass music on a regular basis. And it was a struggle at first. You know, I'd get on stage to play these faster songs and my tone was bad, my volume was poor, my sustain was terrible, and it was just really hard to keep up the way that I wanted to. And, you know, I would ask myself these questions. Am I a bad player because I can't keep up with these faster tempos? And the answer is no, I just wasn't practicing at those speeds before I joined the band. And as soon as I started practicing at those faster tempos on my own, it really didn't take long at all for me to get more comfortable with those speeds on stage. You know, I think it's much like running a physical race. You can't expect yourself to run a really fast time without putting in a lot of effort, sweat, and hard training. And playing fast is hard training. It's okay to sweat a little bit in the practice room while you're working on this. And I think consistency is key here too. Speed is like a muscle that you have to maintain. So keep yourself accountable and try playing fast a little bit every day, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes, you might be surprised at what progress you can make in that amount of time. And speaking of practice, let's get to some practical ideas here with tip number three. Oftentimes when we first start playing fast, our technique goes out the window and that's when our volume, tone, and sustain really suffer. So we wanna make sure that we keep good form when we're playing fast, especially when it comes to our pick hand here. For me, good right hand technique involves a relaxed pick grip between the side of your index and the pad of your thumb with your other fingers curled up underneath the pick here. And then I try to keep both my wrist and my forearm in the game. I use my forearm as a way of relocating from one string to the next. And then I use my wrist as a way of driving the pick through the strings. But I know there's a lot of valid approaches to the right hand on the mandolin. If you play differently, that's totally cool. But the main thing is we don't wanna change our technique unintentionally when it comes to playing faster. For me, I try to keep my technique the same for all speeds, for all aspects of playing, just to make things as seamless as possible. So to become more aware of unintentional changes in your technique, one tip is to try to practice in front of a mirror so that you can really focus in on what's going on that you're not meaning to do. <laughs> which is all related to tip number four here, which is stay loose. I think bad technique produces tension and tension is really the enemy of playing fast. When I was first starting to play fast, I had this bad habit of locking my wrist and really using my forearm as a jackhammer to play fast, which resulted in a lot of tension and pain in my forearm here. At first, I wasn't even aware of the tension, but as soon as I started noticing it, I realized that it was starting up in my shoulders. I was hiking my shoulders up like this, which was causing all sorts of tension and pain down my forearm into my wrist and fingers. So now what I do when I start feeling that tension creeping up, I just imagine a string attached to the top of my head, pulling up towards the ceiling, and allowing my shoulders just to fall limp. 
in addition to good posture, I think it's also helpful to breathe intentionally because sometimes when you're playing fast, we forget to breathe altogether, which causes more tension. So be sure to take good long breaths while you're doing this. And you might be experiencing tension in other places besides your forearm or your shoulders. And I think the key is just to be aware of that tension first. Sometimes that awareness is enough for your body to really fix the problem on its own. But if it's not, then the next step is just to troubleshoot. Make sure that you're still maintaining good technique so you can have a relaxed experience while you're playing fast. All right, this next step is probably the most common advice that all music teachers give to their students. Start slow and then get fast, right? Because if you can't play it slow, then there's no chance of you being able to play it correctly fast. So here's a practice technique that I like to use. I'll take a tune that I'm working on, say Huckleberry Hornpipe that we looked at here on the channel recently, and I'll start off by playing it unbelievably slow, like maybe 50 beats per minute at a half note click with your metronome. And sometimes it's harder to play a fast tune slow like this than it is to play it faster with those mistakes baked in. So this is a really good opportunity to make sure every note sounds exactly the way that you want it to and lay a foundation to play it faster later on. And once you've played through the whole tune at 50 BPM, what I like to do is just kick it up a notch to 55 and try it there. After 55, play the whole tune at 60, then at 65, then at 70, and so on and so forth, until you get to a point where things start to unravel. Let's say for me that tempo is around 130 BPM. That's where I start to make mistakes or not be able to keep up with the metronome the way that I want to. We're gonna call this your tempo threshold, and it may not be consistent from one tune to the next depending on how noty the tune is. So be sure to be specific and make a note of what your threshold is for the tune you're working on. Obviously you can see the merit of this exercise because you're gonna play through the tune so many times, have it better memorized, have it better learned, and you're gonna get faster as you work up towards that threshold. And each time you come back to this exercise, you can try to push past that threshold bit by bit to increase your speed. But I think that's actually only one side of the coin when it comes to getting faster. In order to get more comfortable at those faster tempos, you really have to spend some time playing even faster to get accustomed to what it feels like up there. So for tip number six here, we're gonna start even faster than our tempo threshold of 130 BPM and work our way back down to the threshold because time is relative, right? Einstein wasn't just talking about black holes, he was also talking about mandolin because if you're only practicing from slow to fast, you're gonna be feeling those faster tempos in relationship to the slower ones and they're always gonna feel faster than what you're used to. But if you start even faster and work your way back down to what you thought was fast, it's not gonna feel as fast anymore. So I'm gonna jump up all the way to 150 BPM and just hang on for dear life. I'm not worried about making mistakes. I just wanna keep up with the metronome and get used to what it feels like at this crazy fast tempo. <laughs> Next time around the tune, I'll drop it down to 145. And then 140, and then 135, all the way back down to 130, which now feels like a piece of cake because it's not as hard as 150, right? <laughs> This one might be the most important tip because it was a light bulb moment for me to give myself permission to make mistakes at a faster tempo and work back down to what I thought was fast. But all these tips really come together in tip number seven, which is play along with fast recordings. I think you get the fullest picture of what it's like to play fast when you play along with a pro. So take your favorite fast recording from Adam Steffi, from Sierra Hole or Chris Thiele or whoever it is, and just spend some time playing along with it. You know, this could look like learning a fast fiddle tune that they do or, transcribing a solo that they play fast, or even just chopping along with a fast song, because you're not only gonna be pushed to play fast with them, but you're gonna start absorbing all these subconscious musical aspects that they're playing, like where they place the chop in relationship to the beat, their eighth note feel, or their sustain, or their amazing volume while they're playing at this speed. And of course, you can use a program like the Amazing Slow Downer to slow the song down to a reasonable rate when you're learning all that stuff, and then slowly ratchet up the tempo. You can even play it faster than the original recording and work your way back down as well. There's no better way to recreate that jam scenario that we talked about at the beginning of the video than just to pop on some really fast bluegrass on your stereo and try to keep up. And playing along with some of the best players in recorded history is gonna rub off on you in ways that you can't even expect. 
Well, there you go. Those are my seven tips on playing faster on the mandolin. If you have some additional tips that you'd like to share, be sure to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and we can keep this conversation going. But in the meantime, if you'd like to learn this tune, Huckleberry Hornpipe, that we played a little bit in today's video, you can check out this recent lesson video that we did on that very tune. And I'll see you there.